Well, hey there, XR here, uh, bringing you yet another new game. Uh, not new to me, but new to uh, me making videos, obviously. Um, this is Anno 2070. Uh, the Anno series of games, is, it's kind of a... It's a city builder, but it's a little... Almost kind of like a combination of a city builder and a trade simulator. Um, they started off making historical ones. There was, like, uh, Anno 1707 or something, and there was... Uh, 1500 and 1600 and um, the one before this was Dawn of Discovery was the alternate title it was um, I know 1404 I think so it took place in 1404 and this is the first time they did a future one this game's been out for a couple of years but um, it's really good I really enjoy it so I figured I would uh, make some videos of uh, playing it it also has really great music um, right now it's just kind of like this little well, there's no music playing right now, but the menu screen music is just this kind of cool piano piece, which is, yeah, just starting up again now. But anyway, um, go to the mission map here. Uh, I'm not going to do any of the campaigns. The, they're a bit too, uh, you know, it gets in the way of the building when they're, in my opinion, of the building and, and stuff like that when they're getting so, uh, when they start giving you all the objectives and everything. Um, but they, they, this game actually has a really active community before I actually go into the game. Um, there's all these things like, uh... They, Thank you for being so receptive. They have, points of view. they have votes where you, um, like, I don't know how often they are, I don't play enough to really keep up with it, but they have the Senate and the World Council, and everyone who logs into the game, uh, gets to cast a vote in each of these elections, and whoever is elected, um, gives certain bonuses to everybody playing the game, even single player. Uh, for the duration of their term, so to speak. Um, and then there's these current events, which are like little missions, and they actually, you know, put new ones out every once in a while. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of constantly giving you little missions and things and, and adding to the world and everything like that. But uh, anyway, so, and that's, that's actually what this is, world events. This is like a, you know, these come and go as they add these missions in and stuff. Um, but we're gonna do just a continuous game. Um, we'll do normal. Your authorization for the quest has been verified. Game settings. Uh, so you can you can play this co-op as well. So that's me. Um, I'm gonna make my opponents easy just because I don't want to deal with them too much. They're not really opponents, they're other people, third parties is what they're called. So there are other people in the game that will also take islands. Um, we're going to be eating initi initiative, just because I actually have more fun playing as them. There's kind of two factions you can be. There's the, the global uh, trust and the eating initiative, and um, you know, the, the one is very corporate and polluting and, you know, uh, they're destructive to the islands they're on, and you can make a ton of money and be quite profitable and uh, and powerful, but um, you know, not kind to the environment, which has uh, issues of its own as far as farming and stuff like that. I mean, the Eden Initiative are the kind of like hippies, very uh, eco-conscious and stuff like that. But they're um, I actually like their technologies better and and their stuff like that. So here's where we start. This is my arc. Um, you can actually use the arc to uh, sort of give you yourself... Um, you can use it to buy from the global market um, basic necessities, basically. And you can also slot in upgrades, which I actually have here from other games. These are persistent to your character um, through games. And this is the politics thing I was talking about. So right now, this guy's the been elected to the World Council, and he gives you these abilities, which you need some points to use. Well, I'm not going to go into that right now. But um, so, th so these are some abilities I've bought previously. Um, you know, ecological effect minus 10% means they they have 10% less effect on the uh, ecology, which is good. You know, the more effect they have, the it's basically negative effect is what they're measuring. Um, that improves all tycoon buildings, which was the other one, so that's not useful for me. Um, this improves weather control stations, which will be useful for me, and uh, another one with the minus ecological effect. And you can actually buy f additional ones here, see in the, or in the warehouse. Um, but anyway, so this is the ship we've got. Uh, our, it's a warship, which is good to protect us from pirates. 
Uh, we've got 40 building modules, 40 tools, and 10 fish to start our new colony with. So this is the island we have to start on. Let's just take a look here. Uh, this is actually a pretty good one. It's very large. All the maps in this game are a series of islands. That's that's what the whole game is. And um, each island has certain fertilities. So this one has tea, rice, and coffee. And it has a slot for one more. You can buy seeds to add fertility to um, islands if they don't have it. Um, but luckily, this has the basic ones that we need for our... You know, the different societies have different needs. So uh, the fact that I am... Um, Global Trust, or not Global Trust, I'm the other one, uh, Eden Initiative means my people will want tea and rice, which is why they gave me those things to start. Uh, here's lobsters, which I can use later. We've got a mine site, which you can use for either coal or iron. We've got some rivers, which is good because uh, some of the later industries require to be on rivers. Uh, the only thing we don't have, and which is actually quite rare, is a waterfall. If you have a waterfall, you can actually build a hydroelectric dam. So. We'll sail over here. Uh, we'll start by placing our warehouse, which is this button here, and you get one, the first one for free. Um, that's a mine site too. Yeah, I guess this is a pretty good place to put it. So let's stick it right there. All right, and all those goods transferred from my ship over to here. So we need to set up our colony. The first thing we need to do is build, this is the build menu down here, a city center. Um, because this is where we start building our houses and it has to be within a certain distance of that but you don't want to put it too close because in this game actually uh, things don't have to be connected by roads so in other words if I have my industry over here um, I don't have to connect that to the housing district by roads in fact I, I don't I'd rather not I want to maximize the efficiency of my deliver cars delivering goods and stuff by only connecting the roads to the buildings they need to be delivering to and they don't need to be delivering to houses as long as I have goods in my warehouses no matter where the warehouses are on the same island everybody will have access to them so this is going to be the city center this is where I'm going to build my homes around but I do need to build some roads and zoom in so I can get a better look at what I'm doing here and what I usually do is surround this with roads and then kind of go out from each corner a little bit like that and then we'll need to place some houses now building these houses costs uh, Two building modules, but they generate money for me. Right now, my, I'm actually making minus 50 uh, income. I'm not sure what the time unit they measure for that is, but uh, it's minus 50 because I have no people giving me money. So we're going to build some houses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, perfect. Ten is a good to start. So now you can see my little people wandering around here and I can click on them and you can see that what they need is fish that's their only need at this low level um, gorgeous here? they're well oh, satisfied for so food good. and community and actually we want to lower their pay grade uh, yeah see this is like basically how much how happy I want to keep them um, and that affects how much uh, resources they use. And the more happier I keep them, the more resources they use because they're using them to satisfy their needs better. But basically, they can upgrade to the next level uh, if they get the right goods. But they won't as long as I... They'll only upgrade if I keep them at the highest level. And I want to keep it one below that because I want them to be happy so they continue to move in. Um, which is what this is, but I don't want them to upgrade without my permission because if they upgrade without my permission, then um, they might start having needs for things I'm not ready to supply them with, basically. So, uh, actually, there's a way to set it so that they can't upgrade without my permission. And I don't remember what it is, unfortunately. Uh, oh, here it is. Yes. 
ascension rates are denied. So they won't be able to upgrade until I actually uh, give them permission to do it. So, right now, as we saw, their only need is fish. So we want to get a working fishing industry. We also want to get a working building module industry so that um, we can get more building modules to build more houses. So we'll start by placing a fishing place. And see that cost me 125 credits, one building module and two tools. And then we will connect it via a road to this warehouse. This is my starting warehouse. Um, so anything that's stored here right now is nine fish. 11 building modules, 33 tools, can be accessed anywhere on this island. They don't actually have to be, so the people, you know, there doesn't have to be a road connecting here to here for the people to get the fish. As long as the fish are in the warehouse, the people will be able to eat them. Uh, actually, I have a, uh, the where, these big warehouses come with a floating cargo drone who will fly over and pick it up, but they also have driving ones that go on the roads. See, he's doing it right now. So there's fish there, he's picking up the fish, he's gonna bring it back to the warehouse. These little arrows here, um, well, they mean my stock is increasing. I'm not sure why my stock of building modules is increasing because I don't have that any industry for that build yet. But So if we go in here, and the way these building menus are organized is actually by industry. So fishing, the only thing I need for that is the fishery. But if we go into building modules, it expands because I need basalt extraction to get the basalt, which is then refined into um, in a smelter into building modules. And it doesn't, there's a ratio, usually for these kind of production buildings, it's two to one. Uh, my smelter uh, will, will operate most efficiently with two basalt extractors supplying it with, uh, with goods. Now, there's actually no way, like it doesn't tell you that anywhere in the game, the only way to actually figure that out is to build them and watch the... Uh, the, it tells you the efficiency that it's operating at and, and figure it out yourself. There are guides online, of course, um, which is how I learned a lot of this stuff. But anyway, um, let us get building with that. Um, these I can just put over here because they actually can share this little area so let's build two basalt and this is just showing the uh, area that it will impact you don't really want to have those overlap too much because when they overlap oh maybe that's not what it's showing maybe it's showing is what it's in range of so um, these basalt extractors here will supply to things in in the range of them or something i'm not actually sure 100 percent. don't hold me to that i swear i'm actually kind of decent at this game anyway i'm just going to put these right next to each other and keep an eye on their oh okay they actually need fields i didn't realize that that's the way these ones work i guess i'm used to the tycoon ones so these are our these are basalt extractors and i actually have to place these like little fields um, which is where they are actually extracting the basalt and they're associated with these buildings and that's what that area is showing me it's showing me where i can put those fields in it's less important for these because they only have two each it's more important with uh, the tea farms and stuff which i'll get to in a minute so they're going to be extracting basalt now um, they're going to have cars that take them to the warehouse and then the cars gonna take them back out to the smelter which will then produce building modules for me uh, that being done, now I need to build some more houses because you can see I'm still not in the positive. These do have to be next to a road. Uh, as you can see, the little green... Alright, now I'm out of building modules. Little green kind of things coming next to the road, um, showing where it links onto the road. If it's not linked onto the road, the people won't have community, which is one of their needs here. See, now they have food and community, and now they want drink. Um, they won't riot without it, it's not an essential need, but in order to upgrade to the next level, they need to fulfill all four of these, so they'll need drink and activity. It also depends on population, they get, like this one says, um, activity is required if I have 144 workers, currently I have 90. 
So I just hit the level where I, I now need to satisfy their need for drink, which is where tea farms will come in. But I need more building modules. So there's my little truck delivering the basalt to the building module place. Now you can click on this and actually see here these arrows. That means stock is increasing. And like I said, I'm not sure why it's showing that for like the tools because I don't have a tool factory. But uh, that means it's decreasing because I just used a whole bunch of them. Uh, this is stable right now, meaning I'm using about as much as I'm uh, producing, which is good. Uh, I think I'll send my ship out to explore. Here's the mini map down here. So let's just send him out to see what other islands are around. I do want to get an eye on where the other people are. Um, I can trade with them, first of all, but second North of all, acquired. I want to make sure they're not going to be up in my business. So this island has vegetables, wine, and sugar beets. That's good. I'm going to want to expand onto this island. It's pretty small, though. What the hell is that? A damaged nuclear reactor. Jeez, that's not good. Permanent minus 200 to ecology on that planet. Or, on that planet, on that island. Eventually I'll have technology to take care of that, but I don't as of yet. A lot of this game is kind of just sitting around waiting. I don't think there's any way to adjust the time scale to make it go faster. I could be wrong about that, though. Now, here's actually showing my resources. I have 11 mining sites. I have uh, 3,803 tons of basalt remaining that I'm quarrying out. I've got lobsters. I've got sand from the rivers here, which is needed for making concrete. Um, I've got 10,000 tons of coal, 8,000 tons of iron, almost 2,000 tons of limestone, and 4,000 tons of copper on this island. It's actually a pretty decent starting island. What have we got up here? This is just like a little archipelago. All right, I'm gonna keep this guy moving around. Just send him around the map. He shouldn't get into too much trouble, and he's a warship, so he can defend himself if he does. At this point in the game, nobody should have any anything too powerful. So he's just gonna be scouting out for me. Um, in the profit or in the green budget-wise. Professor Davy. Okay, I discovered Professor Davies' Ark here. Uh, that's good, because I need to buy a submersible from him. I could buy tools and building modules from him, which is good. So next I need to work on T. Is this time? Uh, okay, you can speed up time. You have to actually hold the button down, though, which is kind of annoying. Uh, Alright, so what do I need for... T. T is going to be the next entry. Well, first of all, I need to pick a spot and build a depot, which I can do right now, which is the way you uh, expand your building influence. Basically, this depot will allow me to build anything within that green ring. And I want to kind of put it away from my... But it has to, see, it has to be within a certain distance of your other buildings. Game save. Ooh, auto save. Um, I don't want to interfere with my ability to build up my living area though, so I'm going to put this is going to be the tea production area over here. Let's build some. Uh, actually, I'm going to wait on the roads until I actually build the tea farm. Okay, so I, I can build this now. Um, Registering energy shortage. Okay, so I need some more energy. These have three fields. So we'll do them like that, and then we'll build the road like this. And we can build some more tea farms when we start to need them, but now they'll start farming the tea. Tea will go into here, which is the same as it being in the warehouse, so anybody can access it. All right, so we need more energy, and the way that the eco-friendly Eden Initiative gets energy is with wind farms, which have to be within range of your buildings. And this, this circle around the wind farms is they actually produce less power if there are uh, more than one of them within that ring, so you want to space them out a little bit to get the best use out of them. 
Later on, you get um, ones that you can actually put on the water, which is by far the best because, you know, they're much easier to space out. There's my little fishing ship going out to catch some fish. Let's check on our stocks. Looks like we're doing pretty well. Uh, oh, and I wanted to check the efficiency of these as well. That's extracting at 100%. That's extracting at 100%. That is producing at 100%. Good, that's what we want to see. So here's our tea farm. Also operating at 100%. Let's see the little futuristic hydroelectric farms there. Isn't the music in this game awesome? I, I always comment on music in games, but I just love good music in games. Alright, and we're gonna need to kind of arrange this because soon we're gonna need activity, which is gonna be a concert hall, which is gonna affect a radius. So we want to keep that in mind as we kind of expand our little town here. To do this most efficiently. Uh, I want to see how wide this needs to be for two. Okay. Just start doing it like that. Let's start doing this like this. Make little squares, basically. All right, I'm out of building modules again. And I'm in the negative again because my tea plant has tea factory has some costs associated with it. And so they're starting to get their drink need fulfilled now that I've got the tea farm up and running. How's my ship doing? In the middle of ocean, he didn't find anybody on that stretch. Head over that way. And as, as my guys go up, as I start to need more things and I can upgrade my guys, I'll get more and more stuff down here that I can build more and more production chains. And eventually, I'll need to go over onto this Any island or some other islands um, that can basically, there's a waterfall. Uh, basically supply the fertility for the different crops that I need and then uh, if you're looking for the green offensive you've come to the right place all right so here's an inhabited island this is where um, that guy lives it's another Eden initiative guy it looks like which is good because that means he'll be pretty friendly with me what is this a clear construction site huh I don't see where his actual colony is. Oh, there it is. Whoa. If you're looking for the green offensive, you come. Interesting. Rent ozone generator station. Hmm. Maybe I can colonize that and he'll sort of rent these areas to me. That's pretty interesting. They've added a lot of stuff to this game since the last time I played it, which admittedly was quite a while ago. Um, I'm gonna clear these out. These are my notices over here. So I need to just keep building houses, basically. Ah, there we go. The people have been moving in. My drink is fully satisfied. Now I can build my uh, concert hall. I need four. Building, there we go. So see, this will affect everything in that range. So I want to try to centralize it as much as possible. So I'm going to put it there. Scanning so unknown coast. I'm going to kind of draw this road around it. Try to keep my neighborhoods as uh, symmetrical as possible. So we've got another island over here. Another one with uh, vegetables, grapes, and sugar beet. I'm just going to have this guy basically crisscrossing the map, trying to expose all of it. At least until I get to the point where I need him to carry goods, which I will because it's expensive to build your own ships at first. So my eco balance on this island is negative two. I have something that's negatively affecting the environment slightly. It's probably. Registering no, it's not those. Huh. 
Huh, I wonder what's giving me the negative two eco balance. Hmm. Don't know. Ministering mainland. Wow, this is a pretty big island here. Oh, hey, there's a. This is where you can build a hydroelectric dam. That's awesome. I should. It has the same fertilities as my current island, though, so there's not a whole lot of point in me going there. But uh, it's a massive island, and it has a hydroelectric dam site, which is pretty impressive. So I may try to expand there at some point if someone else doesn't snag it first. So, I wonder if these guys could advance now, if I wanted them to. Yeah, they could, I think. Uh, do I want to do that, though? I probably do. I need to put in, fill in some more houses. Maybe I can buy... I still have a lot of money. I've been pretty cheap so far. How much? 40 tons for 2,000 credits. Yes, please. How many tools do I have? 21? That'll work. Alright, ship. I need you to come back here because those goods are going to be delivered to my ark. And then I need to bring them over here. That'll give me a little leg up. The more you order that stuff, the more expensive it gets, though. So that time, and there's also a cooldown on it, 20 minutes, but that time it cost me 2,000 for 40 building modules. Next time it'll probably cost me 4,000 and then 8,000, you know, if I attempt to do it that way. So they really encourage you to, you know, get your own industry built up, producing the things that you need. Oh, my little town. She's growing so fine. Making decent money too. So. Of goods. Okay, my goods have arrived at the Ark. And there they are being delivered. So I will put those onto my boat. There we go. What a good idea. And then I will carry him over here. Okay, the Indian Initiative guy is happy that I have wind farms. So I need to get my boat within range of here, and then the little arrow will pop up showing that I'm trading. And I will drop off those things, and now I have plenty of modules to build more buildings. Uh, I'm going to just fill up these areas with houses. Where's my demolisher? Sorry, house. I want you to be symmetrical. Okay. So we've got a decent population now, so let's let one of these guys upgrade. To the next level. I believe that he will. Oh, and I need to do that. New yep. Class. House has advanced level and that cost me a tool as well. So now I've got eco employees as opposed to just eco workers. As as you're in here, See, and they need two kinds of food. They need fish and sushi. Because what's the little stereotyping in games? No, I don't want actually to give these guys. Right, I want to control their advancing yes by doing it this way so let's get a couple of these going they'll also give me more money there's a like a period in between where um you yeah, have to generate more licenses it's called i'm not sure why they do it that way but they do so we've got our first Eco employees, our settlement is starting to come alive, and I think that's where I'm going to stop this episode. So, I will see you next time with some more of Anno 2070.